a love letter to the Lord. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God. This means my God, my personal God. My strength. Any strength of me by in me by me or in me no he is all of my strength amen in whom i will trust in whom i will trust shout it in whom i will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower i will call upon the lord verse 3 who is worthy to be praised Shouted, he's worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So glad to see Daniel, from <laughs> a soldier of Jesus Christ. Well, we are excited, I mean, to have you with us and all of you that are here for the first time. Anybody here for the first time? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, there's a couple there. We welcome you to the house of God. We are on the move. That's why there are no curtains. No, we are moving to a floor down. Amen. Listen to these powerful words of God. I will love thee, O oh Lord. Does he need to hear that from us? Maybe were we made for that purpose? This is still here. Receive much glory and pleasure, my holy God, in and through my life. Proverbs 16:4. We were made for him. Revelation 4.11, we were made for his pleasure. And today we stand and quote Psalms 18, I will love the Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, all of my strength, in whom I will trust any hope today in this hopeless world. Yes, in my God. Listen to this. My God is not the way you be delivered. It must be your God too. And I believe most of us were brothers and sisters and we have the same God, right? And we quote many times Colossians 1.27, which says, which says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. But it has to be Christ in you personally. Christ in me will benefit me. Christ in you will benefit you. So my God means my personal God. Don't wait to be blessed by the person next to you just because he's excited. Be blessed by the Lord directly, who is your God. Amen. If He is, if He is not, this is the day that the Lord has made. The day of the Lord, where is the cross? I don't know where am I today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That day was the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And in this day I declare the Lord is my God. My personal God. In whom I will trust. He's my buckler. When you get into an accident. It's part of my sermon and illustration. We pray for that person that he might be healed, delivered, and saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if you are in an accident 
and you don't wear your seat belt and we know in cyprus there have been there there have been many deaths in this year because of accidents and children not wearing their their seat belts don't you put your children without seat belts in your car but mostly don't put yourself in god without buckle buckle being buckled up by your final authority his word he's my shield my buckler the word of god is my final authority the word of god is my ultimate authority the word of god is my buckler my deliverer my fortress in whom i will trust and the horn of my salvation horn is always uh, um, uh, an illustration of authority and power and exaltation humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt you in due time he's the horn of my salvation the peak of my salvation he wants to show me and he wants to show everyone around me that he's the god of my salvation and not only that he wants to show how powerful is his salvation there is a prayer of a man of God in the Old Testament and he says that they may know that there is a God in Israel and that my enemies shall see that there is a God in Israel the God of Israel the only one triune God amen praise the Lord and I will call upon the Lord there is no reason to call upon somebody who cannot help you but once you realize somebody can help you your voice gets higher your hopes are getting up are you're they're they're hipping up because you know they can help you amen i will call upon the lord he who calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved romans 10 13 I will call upon the Lord, Psalms 18.3, who is worthy to be praised. Apart from saving me or not, apart from delivering me or not, apart from healing me or not, he is worthy to be praised. Don't wait until the day that you feel that Okay, today I'm going to praise the Lord because I felt my healing. Well, worshipping before you get any healing. Worshipping before you get any salvation. Worshipping before you get any financial blessing. Because the Lord dwells right there in the praises of his people. And if you praise him, that's a proof that you are his people. You got it? So let's praise the Lord. One, two, three. <laughs> don't, do it, don't do it because I told you. Just do it because you are his people. We don't have to lose anything. Let's praise the Lord. Father, we adore you, bless you, love you. You are worthy to be praised. We are the people who are going to praise you. And if nobody else praises you this time in Limassol, we are going to praise you. And thank you for the churches in this area, in churches in Cyprus, churches all over the world that are lifting up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are one of them. But if there is nobody worshiping you or praising you, we declare you're worthy to be praised. And you're the God of your people, the people of praise. And you dwell in the praises of your people. We are his people. A proof? I praise him. A proof? I praise him. A proof? I praise him. If you go out, the first person you'll find and ask him, he will say, I believe in God. So what? You are at the same level of the devil's faith. The devil and demons believe in God and tremble. But we believe in God and tremble in his presence. The devil and demons, they're not atheists. 
they believe in God and they know the future will see them into the lake of fire and the temple because of fear of the judgment of God against them. But we believe in God. We are his people. Amen. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My, my, my feet shall stand at thy gates. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That all the people come unto thee. From wherever you approach Jerusalem, north, south, south, east, north, east, north, west, any direction you go to Jerusalem, you always go up. Jerusalem is a type of church. Any time to come, you come to the house of God, you climb higher, go higher in faith, in praise. In Jesus' name, amen. He is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Mine enemies. Okay, let, 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 let me balance it with another scripture that comes to mind. And it's one of my beloved scriptures oh, from the very beginning of my Christian life. As ipsothio Kyrios ke diaskorpisatosan i ekthriaftu. Let the Lord be lifted high and his enemies scattered. Hallelujah. How are his enemies and our enemies scattered? By lifting up the Lord. Not by personally going in front of the table that the Lord has set before me and trying to rebuke the devil all the time and play games with the devil. Devil, I don't have time for you. <laughs> I go back behind the table. I hide my weaknesses under the table of the Lord. The devil only sees the anointing on me. My cup runneth over. He prepareth, God Almighty prepareth a table before mine enemies. And the only thing I'm doing, I'm praising the Lord. I'm being anointed. I just worship the Lord. And my enemies are being scattered. Amen. The devil will not fly away, flee away, or run away because he sees you. But the devil will run away, flee, because he sees the Lord before you. Amen. Amen. Let me give you another verse. What's going on today? Tell them to come to church. James 4, 7. Resist the devil. Just resist him. How do you resist him? We bring it to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Amen. So we resist the devil and he shall flee as his life is in danger. That's how anybody flees. He doesn't just walk away. He flees. Run at the most speed he can. Amen. Why? Let, it's the first time I saw that. First, first time I am seeing that. What's the connection between the 8th verse that we always uh, mention anyway? Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Well, I must be somebody very special for the devil to, if I just resist him, he flees from me? No, 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 no. no it's not because of you, little donkey. You know the story of the donkey that carried Jesus in Jerusalem? Yeah, we found it in a, in a, in a kid's book. And it showed the donkey with the Lord Jesus riding on the donkey and into the road in Jerusalem. And everybody were, were saying, Hosanna, 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 save us, save us today, Hosanna, Hosanna, to the Lord in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna. 
And the donkey said, well, I must be very, the donkey in the book said, I must be very important for so many people to just praise me. And then there is a phrase, it's not because, it's not for you little donkey, it's for the one who you carry on your back. Amen? It's not because of us the devil will flee away. It's not because of us any good thing happens. It's only because of the one who, whom we carry in our lives. Το επίθετο είναι Χριστοφόρου. Ξέρεις τι σημαίνει. Φέρω τον Χριστόν. Αλληλούια. Amen. We are carriers of Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's what Christopher means. Carrier of Christ. We carry the Lord in our hearts, in our lives. In Jesus name, in our words. And we resist the devil and he flees. Why does he flee? Because the next verse says, draw, draw nigh, close, closer, unto God, and he will draw, God will draw nigh unto you. And when he sees me going towards my God, imagine, the devil is there, I am here, the Lord is waiting, I resist, resist the devil, and instead of fighting the devil, I just go back to my Lord. I don't have time for the devil. <laughs> I have time only for the Lord. Amen? So, he, and um, also from 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he who cleaves unto the Lord is one spirit. So, I am lost in God. God is so bright. He lives in an approach, an approachable light. He is an approachable light. He is the source of all light. So uh, I am not visible anymore. The only one visible is the most high and the devil has him against him. And let me balance it with more scripture. Colossians. 3 from verse 1 up to verse 3 and 4 it says mortify your members that are on the earth and think and uh, focus on the things that are above not below and our lives verse 3 are hid with Christ deep in God can we be seen by anyone if we are hid with Christ in God can touch us verse 4 says and when he shall appear we shall appear with him in glory Hallelujah. so the devil cannot see us in God but the devil and demons and people will see us in the glory of God when we come back for the battle of Armageddon. Amen? Revelation 19, 11 through 16 is the story there that we follow the Lord. When he shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. And then, too late for the devil to touch you. Amen? Till then, for the time being, we're vulnerable because we live in this flesh and we still have these five senses that make us aware of our surroundings and connect us to this physical world. And sin dwells in our members. That means the only way sin can come to me is, or temptation is through my flesh, through my five senses. Once rapture takes place and then we come back with the Lord, no more vulnerable. Amen. With this, this mortal shall have put on immortality. And this flesh that dies will see no more death. Amen. 
That's the power of God in all these verses. Now let us go back to 69 which we read already. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Rest in hope. Rest in hope. My heart is glad. The Lord Jesus said, Out of the heart come all these things. And he gives us a list of evil things. So with all of your diligence, protect your heart. Proverbs 4, read from 20 to 23. That's for reference. But it says there, protect. Felix Protect your heart. Because out of it, out of it, come the issues of life. Amen? So everything comes from the heart. I choose to fill my heart with the word of God so that out of it comes the issues of life. I receive life. I'm filled with life. Is there any hope? Yes. In my heart that is glad and my glory rejoiceth. And my flesh shall rest in hope. My flesh is the only vulnerable thing. That's why it rests in hope. My heart is glad. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world cannot take it away from me. Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's in my spirit. It's in my born again inner man, my spirit. It's in me. And out of it, out of the wells of life, I draw, as the prophet says, draw out of the wells of salvation. Draw, draw the bucket filled with water of life. And besides the prophet, the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament, the prophet, eight centuries before Christ. And then the Lord Jesus Christ manifests himself in 95, 96 AD in Revelation and says at the very end, Revelation 22, those that are thirst and let the bride and the spirit, the spirit and the bride say, even so come Lord Jesus and let everybody who is thirsty Come, come and drink of the waters of life freely. Is there any hope? Yes. In our hearts, we rejoice in the Lord. Let, let me give you an example of um, something that happened in a laboratory experiment. That's science because science has to be subjected to observation in a scientific laboratory laboratory all of these things about the bing bang and the and the Oort cloud and all of these uh, terms that they use they are not science because they they have never seen them never touched them they just speculate speculation is not science amen let me tell you something very powerful that I heard very lately. They say, one of the toughest questions for the scientists, creation scientists to answer. They say, how come the earth is only 6,000 years since the light traveling with the speed of light in 186,000 miles, not kilometers, miles per second, needs a hundred billion light years to reach you. And you scratch your head. Instead of scratching your head, believe the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Let me give you something very powerful. 
from Genesis 1 again because of lack of time I would love to go through every verse I'm referring to you because that's why I give you scripture and verse so that we it's not our opinion we give the Word of God not opinions tell me what did God create first in Genesis 1 the earth or the stars the earth then the stars so instead of us <laughs> let me give you another verse you read that and similar verses in the book of Psalms like 19 talks about a, a lot about the heavens and the earth and the Lord I think it says that, it says that about 17 times the Lord stretches out the universe he stretches out the universe scientists caught up lately and they found that yes the earth the universe expands now you see how silly is the question how much time does the light need to come to the earth since it's so far away the question should be the opposite since the earth was created first and the sun was created later verse 14 genesis 1 14 sun and moon were created then where was the light on the earth no stars no light no 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 sunlight no moonlight no starlight God is light. Amen. But even scientifically, the earth was created first. So instead of asking how much time do you need from the stars, the, the light to come, ask how much time do you need from the, from the earth to, to go that way, to the stars. They got it vice versa. God created the earth and light. He says, light be. How many of you know the Hebrew, uh, simple thing about Hebrew grammar? Hebrew grammar doesn't have the verb to be. So if it doesn't have the verb to be in our Bible, which is right, because it wouldn't make any sense to say that in English. In Hebrew, what did God say? light and it was done earth it was done stars they were done he didn't need to be let there be light that's how powerful God is amen so this is science and this is a science of hope proves hope a number of years ago some researchers performed an experiment to see the effect of hope that has on those people who are going on a continuous or are ongoing hardship two sets of laboratory laboratory rats my mice that is were placed in separate tubs of water two mice two rats in two tubs of water the researchers left one set in the water and found that within an hour they had all drowned two sets of rats one tub another tub of water two sets of mice one, they all died and drowned. The other rats were periodically lifted out of the water and then returned. When that happened, the second set of rats swam over 24 hours. Why? What was the reason? Not because they were given any rest. The other mice died because they didn't get any rest same kind of rats you know what's a rat a big mouse huge mouse where i worked in new york city 
that was the size of them and I came face to face with them really and I went like this and they just stared at me then I found out they jump on your eyes so I didn't do that again I just kept myself away rats like this New York City is filled under the subway and everywhere but same rats died because they didn't ha have any rest the others swam for 24 hours continuously why they didn't die because they didn't get any rest here is the difference but because not because they were given any rest but because they suddenly had a hope those animals somehow hoped that if they could stay afloat just a little longer someone would reach down and rescue them and it says if hope holds such power for unthinking rodents how much greater should be should is effect should be in the, the effect an effect on our lives this is from today in the word many years ago but you see the power in hope if some unthinking animal rut could just swim continuously and get its head above the water because it hoped that someone would reach down and rescue them how much more we that can think we that have been put a brain in us we that have been put a conscience or not just a conscious but a conscious that is god's conscience in us it's connected with god our conscience how much more we that have a hope in christ should hope and continue to swim and not allow ourselves to die oh i cannot swim anymore i cannot live anymore i don't have any rest well hope will give you some more strength because you will know somebody someone will reach down and save you thank god i'm not a rat thank god i don't have such a hope thank god i have a biblical hope thank god jesus christ is coming back it's written it's established the lord is the witness he established it i know it is written how do you know it it is written hallelujah I'll keep on going living I, I'll keep on living I'll keep on hoping I'll keep on praising why because I know even though I'm tired and I cannot go on even though I'm tired and I cannot praise on even though I'm tired and I cannot church and go to church anymore I can keep on going to church praising God living for God because of the hope that someday someone and specifically Jesus Christ is coming back to hold me up and get me into a safe place to live eternally even if somebody picked up these rats they could live for just another moment but we're going to be picked up saved and put in heaven and live eternally in the new Jerusalem and in the new earth and in the new heaven aren't you glad brothers and sisters listen to what somebody else said some of the great sayings hope can see heaven through the thickest clouds hope from a biblical perspective is a future certainty grounded in present reality saying it again a future certainty grounded in a present reality is God a reality for you today at present hallelujah then you have a future certainty he is no fool 
Nobody is a fool. No man is a fool. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep. I give my life away. Can you keep your life forever? Can you keep living on and on and on? Don't you realize that you got older? Anybody? Can we keep going on by ourselves and in ourselves? No way. Apart from Christ, we're nothing. But he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep. My body, my heart, my life to gain that which he cannot lose. Eternal salvation. That doesn't mean once saved, always saved. That means for as long as you are in the life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He that lives in hope dances without music. Stop the music. Good dancing. Continue. I'm saying this again. He that lives in hope dances without music. It means you will not always have the preacher there. Not always have this beautiful heavenly music behind you. Thank you, Steph. And all of the worship team. Thank you for creating this atmosphere. But if you have hope, you will dance in your spirit when you're alone. When you go through hardships in Jesus' name. Other men see only a hopeless end. But the Christian rejoices in an endless hope. Did you get that? Ask people outside. Ask the newscasters. They will tell you they only see a hopeless end. But we Christians, we see an endless hope. I want to shout hallelujah. My time is up. I close here. Hallelujah. Many see an endless, uh, uh, hopeless end, but we see an endless hope in Christ Jesus. Who is our hope? Why is our hope endless? Because Christ in me is the hope of glory and this glory is endless endless hope endless hope endless hope endless hope endless hope endless hope i know it will take some people some time to realize that and as they go home they will start clapping their hands and rejoicing as they go but do that anyway remember that take it with you take it with you people outside see a hopeless end but we see an endless hope and it has a name jesus christ the hope in me hallelujah